Well, good morning and welcome back to the Survivalist 2008 YouTube channel. My name is John and today's Blast from the Past segment, I'd like to highlight the All-American 5 radio series that was very popular back in the United States between the 1930s through the 1960s. What we're looking at here is a really cute little blue plastic radio that was made in Japan and many of the All-American 5 radios were actually made in Japan in the latter days. This particular one, the manufacturing label, has fallen off of the front sometime during its career, its lifespan. But it's a great little representative radio of that time. It's, uh, I, just, I just love this radio because first, they're easy to work on. I was able to recap this radio change a few resistors out and I changed the power cable on the back the old one was starting to fray and I think the previous owner had, had actually done some work too because I when I discussed this with him on eBay he told me that he had uh, conducted some work on it and I just kind of followed up with him but uh, as you can see it's AM broadcast only most, as far as I know, all of the All American Five radios were uh, AM broadcast only. Now, the simple thing about, and the reason the All American Five radios were so popular, especially popular with the manufacturers, was because they were so inexpensive to build. They did not incorporate a power transformer. So, what they did was string all five of the tubes together and the filament voltages would all add up to about 121 volts AC which was just slightly over what they powered uh, from the wall sockets I think it was about 117 volts back then and they didn't need any kind of a step down resistor or anything so basically uh, if one tube went out it's like a string of Christmas lights that years ago. You remember if one light went out, they all went out. Same with this. One tube goes out and they all went out. So they were cheap to build and they were able to manufacture them very small and there was dozens if not hundreds of different designs. Uh, Art Deco designs, wooden cabinets, uh, cathedral styles. Uh, a lot of them were known as farm radios and uh, many of them could be powered by batteries. I have some that are portable and you could you use an A battery and a B battery in those. So that satisfied the cravings of the American public as the uh, automobile came into its own back in the uh, 60s and everyone wanted to hit the road to go to the beach, the mountains and use the new uh, modern uh, highway systems that were put in in the United States. So the All-American 5 radios were designed to go along with that American public. Now there was a feature, let me turn this uh, radio around and I pardon grabbing and reaching across into the view. But as you can see this radio has a plastic case and it has a little, uh, I don't think this is Bakelite, this is formed uh, this form type material that you see on many of the radios. But the thing about the All-American 5 radios, since they ran off of regular house current, there was no isolation transformer, then it was possible that if this radio wasn't treated properly and if the radio was not properly insulated, then you, you could possibly receive an electrical short. Uh, or an electrical shock, I should say, because the chassis of the radio actually was the second half of the AC current, since it didn't have a transformer. So basically the radios were wired that uh, the AC, after it went through the circuitry, went back to the uh, chassis and then back to the uh, electrical service core to make the uh, circuit. Now what they did, I'm going to point out here, you can see this radio has been painted a little bit with some pink paint years ago. But um, 
If you'll notice, you have a little metal plate here that holds this back on. That metal plate has a small screw that protrudes down into the bottom here. But this is basically, this metal plate is not grounded to the chassis. What you have is this chassis back here and these other screws are, are holding that in. So it's possible that these screws here could be hot if it was plugged in, but basically you would know that if you were a consumer back in the 1950s. You'd know better to uh, do a whole lot of messing around. You wouldn't want any insulating washers or anything to fall out. Uh, the Halicrafters S38 series, which I collect, was uh, notorious uh, for, um, well, really not notorious for electrical shorts, but uh, as with any manufacturer that has a chassis that is hot, and then you insulate that from the plastic uh, uh, outer covering, which in this case, it wouldn't be a problem. But with some of the shortwave receivers, not only were the, ch were the chassis metal, but the outer case was metal. So what they had to incorporate was everything, including the uh, control knobs, the screws. Everything was insulated with uh, uh, not really plastic, but they were the old fiber washers. And later they did use plastic uh insulating washers so you had to be careful if you dis disassemble your radio for any reason to make sure you got those plastic uh, insulating uh, washers back in place and make sure that the radio was not uh, was not picking up the hot the hot side it had to be insulated but other than that they were great radios they were lightweight they did have battery operated radios and uh, it was just a great old time in the United States. What I'm going to do now is to pause the camera and come back and we'll see if we can tune in some stuff with the radio. So stand by. Well, before we actually hook up the radio and tune through the AM band and see what we can find. I would like to show you what these A and B batteries look like. These are representative of the old batteries that went in some of the portable radios of the time. Uh, the battery in the front is a 90 volt battery and that usually would uh, power the plate current uh, in the tubes that uh, required a battery. Uh, of course, if it was plugged in wall circuit, then it had a, it actually had a rectifier uh, circuit in that it would actually uh, turn all of the AC into the required uh, voltages. But if you wanted to run it portable, this is what you'd have, and they were rather expensive. That one's three dollar and forty nine cent, and I don't see a date on it, but it uh, back then I imagine that was pretty expensive. The uh, rear battery is a uh, Ever 80 seven and a half volt and that would be the uh, voltage required for the filaments. So I believe these two radio these two batteries actually came out of one of my portable radio. Uh, the, the batteries of course are uh, they're totally exhausted so I can't use them but they're good to hold on to to show what they look like. All right, let's uh, move on and see if we can't tune in some stuff. Be right back. Okay, we're back. Okay, I've taken the opportunity to go ahead and power up the radio, let it uh, warm up for a few minutes. And uh, I actually have a little device here that uh, many of you, I'm sure, you're familiar with. We just have a little coil on top. I think that coil came out of a, uh, I think it was a vintage Heath kit grid dip meter. But anyway, it's just a, a, a coil. I don't even know what megahertz coil, but I've got it hooked up to the coaxial cable, one to the center 
and one to the uh, braid and it really helps to tune in your radios especially these old radios because they have ferrite loop AM antennas and uh, they're not very efficient but you can use a principle of electronics and that's inductive coupling and basically I'll show you simple let me uh, put the mic down and get in a position to uh, move closer to the radio Okay, that's what it would sound like without this little uh, contraption. And of course you can tell every radio has its sweet spot. I think the ferrite loop antenna is over on this side. So you can move this around a little and experiment. But anyway, fifties in the northern suburbs. From there, mostly sunny, low humidity, and a high of eighty-four Wednesday afternoon. On Thursday, morning low sixty-one in town, upper fifties. Well, that's a little demonstration of the All-American 5 radio. They come in so many different sizes, so many different designs. I'm sure you probably have one in your home even now. They're a great radio, a blast from the past. They were easy to work on. They were cheap to build and to sell. And they still last today, as you can see. So... Well, I guess that wraps it up for now. We'll come back later with another blast from the past. But for now, that's all I've got. And I hope to catch you again soon. Take care.